we're going to Japan, we're going to Japan, hi ho the Mario, we're going to Japan. Some mornings I'll feel happy, some mornings I'll feel creative, some mornings I'll feel sad, some, some mornings I'll be longing for my loved ones. This is my friend, she's my friend, and uh, we're getting my married. My both friends. <laughs> we are getting married on November 28th. Chad is a sexy, handsome genius. After you, gentlemen. Chad, great drummer. Great drummer, great drummer. Tall, tall, tough geek. So, Chad, how are you? I'm, uh, I'm a little hungover. What's your philosophy in life? I have a good time all the time. So, <laughs> hey, very special man. Hey, these are Mr. special seeds. Well, look, this is the opposite of crack. <laughs> these seeds will make you feel, will, will uh, give you love and protection. Don't be so pig headed. I'm pig headed. I have a head of the pig. And hey, you know what? Oh! Down my neck! Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you for waiting, ladies and gentlemen. Japan Airlines for a 61 bound for Tokyo is going to start boarding soon. Please proceed to gate 104 for boarding. She said, Oh, your friend. He's so big. Yeah, well, you know, uh, of course I, uh, well, you know. He's talking about Robbie, actually. Yeah, oh. Anyways, uh, I'm hoping that I've uh, spiritually and uh, emotionally evolved to the point where I'm looking for a higher love. <laughs> looking for a higher love. <laughs> it's just no, you know. Don't, 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 This much talent, she's got this much talent. Louis, I lost my boarding pass. Simple fact. He doesn't, he doesn't speak English. I'll, I'll, I'll tell him. Hi, peepers. I really love chili peppers. Hi, little chili peppers. I love you. Give it away, give it away, give it away, nah. And it's a bridge downtown. <laughs> it's red as blue sun blood. <laughs> I'm a little pea. I like red hot peppers. Sometimes I'll be like I don't have a part now. Sometimes I'll be like my only friend. The main thing right now is uh, trying to stick together and to listen to each other as best as we can and to keep our hearts very open and honest and uh, vulnerable for all the people of Japan. I, I recently had my uh, stomach cut open. <laughs> I had an alien inside of my body. Um, oh, I got one. I got one. I got one. I got one. Yeah, let's start with John. I'd like to say that uh, my message to uh, all of Japan is that to uh, embrace the beautiful culture and tradition of your country. Search of the wild panda, the Tokyo panda, the urban panda, the, the urban teenage panda, which are not uh, endangered species today in Tokyo's climate. We reached the red-headed clan. Uh, they only come out during the winter. 
They, they speak in pantomime. I think this is the leader of the clan here. Hi. If only I knew the sacred panda call. The mating call of the panda. They're actually too young to mate, but they, they do respond to the call, if, if you know it. These are the elusive pandas. You notice the pandas, they're, they're not that comfortable in the presence of, uh, of other animals, so they, they, they try to elude us. Hi. Good afternoon. <laughs> How are you? Oh, konnichiwa. 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 Nice to meet you. Life good? Are you teenagers in Tokyo? Living on the edge? Yeah? <laughs> Pretty much? <laughs> oh, I want to know, do the shoes come with walking instructions? <laughs> no, no, no instructions. It is a pleasure. Thank you very much. Don't worry, Gato. God bless. All the best. Thanks for taking the time. Classic panda sighting here in the streets of Tokyo. Oh! And John is, is such a pure artist. Uh, he doesn't care about the reward. He doesn't care about uh, any of the things that come with rock stardom or being in a band or any of the things that someone might think would be the fringe benefits of being in a band. Um, those things are of absolutely no concern to him. His, his, he just lives for the process of, of making music and for the process of surrendering his body and his soul to, to the spirits, you know, and, and uh, letting music flow through him. It's all he wants to do. And uh, he's really dedicated his life to just doing that and to creating good feelings in the world by doing that. And uh, I, I hate to disappoint, you know, the, uh, the Japanese men, but I'm, I'm not bisexual. <laughs> I'm not bisexual, but I do like to buy sex. We all were at a point with our life a couple of years ago where, where we saw very clearly that we were all at the same page of our life, you know, and that we could, that by joining together that we were capable of making some good art. You know? Some of our best, you know, um, music comes from becoming unconscious. Mm -hmm. Things that are like expressed in, in weakness, I think we can express with strength, you know.
match me or Aki Bono. Chad Rowan is his real name, incidentally. How much is 245 kilos? 500 and some odd pounds? album 
triple. Triple platinum. 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 Triple
have a little bit of a Yeah, you really want to do that thing and then you're about to ask? Oh, I didn't figure it out. Yeah, that's right. Let's go back. That's okay. Six tapes in there. Just, yeah, I just put them all in one place. I'm gonna see three. No, you you you're looking in. There's two. They're in two different compartments. Oh, okay. Were you filming my bum? Uh, 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 okay. Yeah, he's good. He's a healthy nose, throat, and tongue specialist. Could you lead me to John Fashante? I know it helps, you know, to do my normal, like, stretching and stuff that I do before the show and relaxing. When Nine Inch Nails is on before us, I can't relax, I can't concentrate on stretching or... The girl was asking me about our, our pre-stage routine. It was like, green tea, ginseng, stretching, meditating, techno, warming up. Chad, Chad, Cigarettes and beer. Chad's about three beers and a ginseng. I said when it gets into four and five and six, Trouble. Trouble is in the air. If I get here this early, I can easily have three. I can easily have right. six. You're right. I didn't tell him about the bottle of wine I had at dinner. <laughs> this is for all the redheads, uh, male and female. Die though, natural. <laughs> Especially the cousins of three. This is my, uh, Feel free my cousin. Hello, this is Ashley, Francis, and Annette. My first message is for the Australian people. And that is, uh, I'll be there at three. Bring the bowling ball, the cream cheese, and the dynamite. Meet me in the bathhouse, and try not to be late. I've been listening to them since I was about 13. I love their music, that's, that's all I can really say. How would I describe their music? Loud? <laughs> Funky. Freaky. You sit there and you listen to some of the lyrics and you just, wow. Things aren't up, you know, like there. I just have to put them on and I'm up here. One hour. I have a lot to do in the next hour. We're 40. I mean, I just oh. thought you liked it a little shorter than most of oh, I thought you didn't, so. I actually couldn't see that in the light. gap right here between rocks. I'm gonna do a little trick for you here. That guy in that shop is What? Yeah, that guy. Sweet last My name's Antoinette. Have you signed it for me? I was wondering if I could have an autograph. Is that alright? If it just gets okay, if it just, I don't, I don't yeah. want to interrupt or impose anything. Just somewhere over here would be nice. Now, since we got 
Hot Chili Peppers. We'd like to thank the people of Sweden, the magazines of Sweden, the workers of Sweden, the rich people of Sweden, the prostitutes of Sweden, the drug addicts of Sweden, the royalty of Sweden, the lovely young ladies of Sweden, and all the high school students and preschool students of Sweden, and they love all the nannies and uncles and aunts of Sweden for these beautiful Rock Gornan Awards. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Oh. Well, I appreciate yeah. everything you've done for me. Sacred ginseng ritual. This is what I do for my my bandmates every night because I want them to feel good. The ten, it's that 10 hour rule. <coughs> what is it? It's a new brand of ginseng. It's in sit real good. Bad mojo. This is the one and only last cup of the good shit that I say for you. Oh really? Aww. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. Strong like a motherfucker. Bitter, bitter. Oh, I might have to pass on that. Not you. Are there any of those ginseng teas around? Yes, there really are. Flavor. Is it alright? Of herbal technology. Mm -hmm. Is it alright? Okay. Is it okay? alright? Yeah, it's yeah. good. It's fine. The main thing is to touch for guys on stage, you know? the air for the music for us. There's a lot of energy out there, Flea. This is a Melbourne taxi driver. <laughs> <laughs> My mom's here in Melbourne right now. I know, that's what I was asking about this morning. Even when he was fighting Holyfield, he was kind of statuesque looking. Tyson is no doubt uh, punching the shit out of this guy. Bust him up, Mike. Bust him, bust him. Oh! Get up, get, get up, up bitch. get up, you little bitch! What? What? Tyson made mincemeat of a non-worthy opponent. There were not two athletes of a kind caliber. of looking like a, a dandelion that's, you know, gone into a puffball. I'm waiting for my brains to blow away in the wind with a haircut like this. I like having long bangs, but, yep. they, but they've gotten a bit trashed at the bottom. Yep. I, I like having sideburns since I can't actually grow any of my own. All that kind of shaggy business down there, you get to whack that off, all, all this... Oh, very nice. I'm clean now. Thank you. Yeah?
The other one was he pulled some guy's nut right out of his sack. What? He went up to a guy and grabbed his nut and pulled pulled a testicle out of his fucking Good sack. It. John Bonham. That's a fucking folklore if I ever heard. It, it. wouldn't come out. It wouldn't rip. Said he, the skin said, he, didn't said he pulled it out of his nut sack. That's rock and roll folklore. You guys, let's show everybody we care. Show these people we care about them. Show them we love each other and we care about ourselves. Is, it, is this mostly stuff for hire? Or do you sell beards and mustaches? Beards and mustaches. This is a handsome piece right here. You should make Tex Avery proud. <laughs> Would you mind just putting those on real quick? <laughs> you got big lashes. Babes. What kind of a wig are you recommending for me? So this is kind of your Ramones collection here? That's a pretty sick look. Woo! Oh man, chew me. I'm, I might just be like one of those big freaks, you know? It's like a big... Talk to me, Dad. You wanna step the fuck outside and talk about this? I didn't think so. Matches your eyebrows. Is that a pickup line? I didn't think so. By the way, I knew this guy. I knew this guy. I knew him. His name was Alan Bashera, and he was a good man, Vietnam vet. Did I did I fool you? No, I just thought you were some Mexican restaurant guy that Dick knew in, in the Western States. You guys know where I can find the big day out? Alright, here. You're here, is it? Yeah. Oh, God. Am I really what? Am I what? Come on, Charlotte. Come on. Come on now. Come on now. What do you feel when you come to a place like this? Uh, love. Love. Openness. My name's Alan. Lynn. Alan. Shannon, mate. Food fires, pretty good, and uh, chili peppers, very keen to see chili peppers. I've, I've seen them more than one time. The bass player, his choice. I, I like the guitar player. You wouldn't know where I can get any hot dogs, maybe with some onions on top. Have you taken any prescriptive medication for the day? Um, taking this fucked up drug, right? What called what? I don't know. G'day. Alan Bashera, Hollywood, California. How are you? One, two, three, four. You have to shake hands. Okay. Are you in line? I'll be Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know Neil Sean was playing guitar for me. <laughs> Some kid said, hey, you dropped your pass, man. <laughs> sorry, fucking Baba. You had a big sign up front that says Fairfax High, like the big marquee. Yeah. We used to, uh, Anthony and I used to change the letters around. There was a teacher we hated called Mr. Platt, Mr. Don Platt. We changed it around so it said Don Platt sucks anus. <laughs> then when we'd come to school in the morning, we'd be like, Don Platt sucks anus. And then we uh... <laughs> uh, I, I write music, I play guitar, and you know, I, I spend all my time doing it. If the band had to do my schedule, they would be dead. <laughs> this is the last show tonight, you know, so we've been here for a couple of weeks and it's, uh, it's been good. I don't know, I think there's something funny about the air here for me. I, mean, <laughs> I wake up every morning feeling like funny. Like <clears throat> we make people feel good for a living. Let's make
do feel good. Shots back there doing two skis. God damn it! What's up? We've got mohawks and we're coming to you to chop it up. You got mohawks, that's what we got. <laughs> the half what? <laughs> Look at that! <laughs> this natural hawk right here, yeah. take that baby and do a straight line all the way back. Look at that! <laughs> yeah! Look at that! <laughs> I'm the fire starter! I'm the fire starter! No, I'm the We have special guests. They've come to visit us. They've come to share their philosophy of love and of enlightenment with us. These people are coming to share their grace, their style, their love with us. Who do we got? Julia Butterfly, Wayne Dyer, ladies and gentlemen, Carolyn Mason, John Lurie, the coolest guy in the world, Chris Rock, Woody Harrelson is my brother. They are blonde redhead and they will greet you when you arrive in heaven. You're Next question, please. Mr. President, 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 I heard you're on tour with the Foo Fighters. Are they imposters? Next, Next question, please. Next question, please. It's time to let the freaks into your house. <laughs> you always have to be so zenny. Why are you so zenny? Why are you like that? Why are you so funny? This is a real picture. This is human behavior. It's something that has got to in. Oh man, oh, thank you. I fucking love it. That was fantastic. I never got bored. I was surprised when it was over because it went a lot quicker than one would have expected. The songs that people seem to respond to the most are the slow ones. You know? I mean, they rock to the fast ones, but the slow ones were like the anthem for them. I 
Alright, let's see who can stay up on their hands and lungs. Okay, here we go. Oh! Ah. You down? Yes. Two out of three is standard. Marcus Welby, go. Marcus Welby. Don't start laughing. That that'll mess you up. Can I go underneath there? Alright, go ahead. <laughs> Alright. I hate losing. I just You're not gonna be able to sleep tonight. Oh, I'll sleep just fine. After, after I beat him, I'll sleep just fine. No, no, I, I beat you twice a I know you did. I mean, try, you know, try to maybe a little later, we'll give it a little time, just relax. How about a. Uh, uh, there's a backgammon table. Papa. Backgammon, are you going to get a backgammon? I'll kill you in backgammon. I rule it back. <laughs> <laughs> I like. I don't want to embarrass you. Come all the way out here I'll to be on the you internet TV show. Crush <laughs> you, Dude, I'm winning this game. I guarantee it. He practices that stuff every single day. I come in. I haven't done a handstand in like a decade. <laughs> okay, fine. He beats me on that, but you're not going to beat me on this. I think that I'm in the process of whipping your ass right now. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. I'm in great shape here. Do you want to bet on this game? Here comes trouble. You get to the floor, you get to the floor, you get to the floor, you get to the floor. I feel a five coming on so strong. Come on, five. Oh, we got two on one. Let me see, two one. What was that? What's it called? Wait, is it a bat game when a guy is still groveling up there when you get all your shit out? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord help you. <laughs> oh, God, I guess I just keep rolling then, don't I? What's it called when you're still on the bar there? Oh, that's like, that's ugly. Barely squeaked by a victory after I... After I like rompled you in the last game. <laughs> <laughs> After it was like a. Uh... You didn't romple me, still skin. Everybody has a soundtrack for their life. I'm going to promote a film that I narrated called Grass. Grass. About how pot became the most maligned plant on the planet. It talks about how the government developed it into a, you know. A bad guy? Yeah. Turned it into this dangerous threat. Um, but I don't know. In a free country, you get to grow whatever you want. You get to smoke whatever you want, in my mind. Does grass talk about, um, like the, the value of weed clothing? And it mostly talks yeah. about pot. It doesn't talk about hemp. Right. I mean, I make the distinction between hemp and pot. Right. Yeah. This is hemp. Think for yourself. Form your own opinions. Trust your own judgment. I didn't start surfing until I was 32 or 33. How old are you? 37. I started when I was 30. I just like sitting on the surfboard and waiting to go. No, I like that wow. sitting. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's yeah. my favorite, like, I mean, getting a wave is great, but I just like paddling out real early right when the sun rises and just sitting out there waiting. Yeah, just feeling the vibe out yeah. there. If you're uptight or stressed a little bit, it just yeah. takes everything away. Yeah, it totally does. And it's like, for me, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like, it's that sitting there going up and down. It's like the world breathing, you know, and you get in tune with it and just get totally in tune with the inhale and the exhale of the world and it just relaxes everything. And that's my theory, that's what it is. That's why. It facilitates psychic phenomena, it facilitates the left. It's improvisation, you know how it is. Sometimes it's amazing and sometimes it sucks, you know, but that's the whole beauty of it. It's the gamble of the risk. trusting in whatever's going to happen, you know. Do you decide before well, then you go on? I don't on know how you pop out a grade on it at the end because I felt it was amazing, you know, and like you may yeah, I guess. have some expectation, but. I guess I just like compare it to other ones, like times when I know I really felt like, like I totally let go of everything and like we all let go of holding on to any idea of it and just surrendering completely to music. I think the most important thing to learn is how to relax.
Yeah, watch the Chili Peppers. Buy all their shit. Soup. Chili Pepper soup. Whatever they have. Merchandise. Buy their shit. Hammer's actually choreographing the Blue Tains next door. Young MC is doing a cover of Give It Away. That's right here. It's really big. How are you doing the outfit? So I gotta you didn't realize Snoop Dogg was a star. A star. That's the same thing I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> biggest, the biggest selling record in the world. The kid comes out, the Eminem, and he's got Eminem's the kids going. He's got the kids going. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. He's, he's like, he's riding high. He's riding high. He finishes. He goes off the stage. And on comes Snoop and Dre, and it got a thousand times bigger. But it's really like, Snoop Doggy like, Dog is a fucking star. Snoop Doggy Dog. And Eminem was rapping his ass off. It wasn't like he didn't have his shit together. He was he had fucking practiced his shit. And you know, I, I realize that you know, you a heterosexual guy, you don't realize these things. Most of the guys on the show are on on the Dre tour, they're like pudgy guys or whatever. Snoop Dogg's cut, fucking tall guy, six, three. He's cut right here. He's cut got here. Like, he's got all this shit. He's got, yeah, he's got the face, face yeah. and he's got hair out the fucking. He's a rock star. And he's got the suit. <laughs> and he's, he's just. He's a rock star. He's got long hair. He's fucking, you know. And then I had disgusting jokes that, you know, went nowhere about women's periods. You know, well, I still have that. You know, I'm, I guess I'm still on my book, though. Yeah. You live, you learn. You know, I had long hunks on porno. <laughs> But you get me, Renee, we got Renee, Morgan Freeman, and myself. So. Enough said. Everyone will be there. So you dissing Jersey? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm feeling very pro Jersey. Okay, because sometimes you know. Like, okay, no, 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 I'm going the opposite. I'm going hail. Let's try some shit. We're only in Jersey. No, it's not that. that to me, this is a big show because it's so close to New York. I get like that about Cincinnati. I'll try anything in Cincinnati. Those first track thinking. Is it the best okay. record ever? It's really ever. It's absolutely true. Is this the most? Is the best? It's the hardest, most naked, raw. It is everything hardcore. people hate about rap, and it's everything you love about rap. It's just the greatest. Yeah, it's nothing. I just love it. I love. It. Yeah. For me, it's like the essence of the whole greatness of the music of the rhythm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No frills, no fucking air. There's no credits on it either. There's no. It's just sample awesome. clearance. I like the whole record though. I love the whole album. Yeah. That yeah. whole thing was like, whoa. Yeah, yeah. it's totally just a crazy sounding track. <laughs> Who's the let cool me, guy in town? Yeah, let me know all those things so I can incorporate them. Who's the coach the of the basketball team? I wanted to build their confidence, you know? They need that because I was good. And I, and I think oh. they had a sneak. You came over to the New York show. Oh, yeah, I went to like four. I, I had a sneak. Well, it takes you four. <laughs> hey! It was the New York show. I've always looked at it as a well. And the New York show has to be correct. go way back. Uh, Anthony writes all my jokes, and I wrote other side. Me. Just the intro. Yeah. It, was, it actually started off as a joke he was working out, and I was yeah. like, you know, this quirk seems like a serious song yeah, if you think about really, it. This in is fact, it's not that funny. Really, It'll but. never be funny. We were just there for the sting last week. All right, we're glad you made it. Yeah, I'll be back. It's been a while, but we'll, we'll go back. I will be back. Nice. Good to see you. Yeah, okay.
it's manly. Yeah, you look great. Was, you were totally wrong yeah, about you were, you were way wrong. You were so Let wrong. Let me like an asshole. We went to New York and there were all these little clubs and options and he's like, you want to go see Lounge Lizards? You went to see us like... I was like, like, what the fuck is Lounge Lizards? You saw us a long time ago? So long, like 80, 81, 82? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jean-Michel Bescat had a going away party for him. The band was going to go on tour. And so he made it into this, like, where he invited Steve Rubell, Bianca Jenker, Andy Warhol, Francesco Clemente, Vim Fenders. I invited Vim Fenders, Tom Waits, Jarmish. And it was like, you know, it was kind of this amazing thing. It was a Mr. Chow's, and it was like, everybody was like... And so then Andy... So no big deal. But then... When Andy Warhol died and those diaries came out, he said it was the, you know, he's going to start hanging around with fags because he's going to start hanging around with artists now because this was the best party he'd ever been or he'd been to in 10 years. And the guy, the woman who transcribed the, um, his, they were just on tape, so this woman had transcribed with him. And she turned me and Tom Waits into John Waits. Remember playing with Hello? Sure. Back in the day. Yeah. I love what, what was your shit called? Hammerheads? Uh, Dr. Hammerhead. Remember when we were going to have you play in the lounge? Yeah. The fact is that I really had barely touched a guitar in like four years or something. Yeah. I, mean, I remember no, I was I just remember going on. My assistant calling me and said, I just talked to Fashanti. He said, I don't like the way you guys are handling this and hung up. So I guess he's not <laughs> going on. I guess he's not going on the tour. <laughs> Every day, yeah. I hear you play on the bus all the time. I hear. I don't like the feeling of going on stage if I haven't touched the guitar all day. Yeah. So I, pra I practice on the bus, and when I go up on stage, I feel uh, strong. When you start to do one of the hits, the slower ones, and they start to sing along on mass, uh -huh. does that ever piss you off? No, I just have to focus on hearing the pitch yeah. of the song. Yeah. Because my throat gets so messed up that going to the natural place where I sing songs isn't always possible. I have to find a different place in my head to sing. Range wise, like higher or lower? Not higher or lower, just like, you know, sometimes you sing from here, 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 you know, mid ranges and shit. Yeah. And if my voice is fucked up and I'm like, oh, I gotta find a weird place to sing from. Yeah. I also know from singing with this Marvel Pontiac, I mean, you can mess yourself up completely like something that should be just completely normal and then once you get it in your head that you have to think about it, then you just, he you just hex yourself. How old are you now? 37. So do you think about like being 45 and doing this? Do you I don't know. I, next Bill I can't really. <laughs> you get out there and you think, God, I don't want to put Give It Away tonight. Do you have to or how does that work? That's one of the only songs. Sometimes I feel like that. But, but that's that's what so I was, that was I was talking about, about the kind of the rock out kind but of But only when I get insecure, when I feel like I have to do certain things, like physical things in it. Like if I would just relax on it more, I probably wouldn't feel that way as much. But sometimes I feel like I have to like, these ridiculous knee squats. What they really want is just for Flea to be there and for him to be him. And that's 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 the number one thing. It doesn't matter if he jumps around. You can be great, you can be great in rehearsal, you can get chills in rehearsal when you put but there's another almost warlike intensity that happens because of because of the crowd. I never even look at the crowd until halfway through. Does the energy of the crowd frighten you? Hell no.
Chad did remarkably well, no? I thought Chad did great. They keep going? I couldn't tell Those if it was Those guys are you. dead. They're dead little fucking poof I couldn't tell if it was hurting you or not. They no, the balls there, the and the sparkles right? didn't. The spaghetti yeah. no, didn't. The spaghetti, no. It spoke about your uh, history of drug addiction the other day and how you cleaned yourself up. It's the challenge of a lifetime for mm -hmm. sure. Um, but I'm, and I'm pretty grateful for the challenge because uh, without it, and I, I think I may have never been uh, privileged to discovering the big picture. One of the common qualities, or one of the de certainly the dominant, is the issue of control that people have, mm -hmm. and the loss of feeling that they can't control their external life, um, suffering from the inability to control their inner life, mm -hmm. um, the fear of being out of control, and not uh, almost wanting to drown that fear so they can live yeah. in the illusion yeah. that they are in control. Yeah, I think there's a part of it which is, you know, wanting to take this shortcut to a relationship with God. You know, I think that's sort of where the name getting high comes from. Either you release the need to control your life mm -hmm. and give in to some greater power that would direct your ascension mm -hmm. or your getting high process. Right. Or you insist on doing it your way which would be the mechanical drug way altered state in which case you can't outrun the mystical process mm -hmm. and so it's as if the universe continues to say oh yeah and throws you down deeper and deeper and deeper right until you finally get to the point where you can't run anymore mm -hmm. and then your ascension begins Let's keep talking today. Under the Bridge is this song about, you know, not wanting to have to uh, re-experience certain lows and loneliness and just the common human experience of perils. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and people love connecting to a common peril. When I write lyrics for my songs, I'm not thinking of this, of making things better in this mm -hmm. world at all, but uh, but I am thinking of making things better in other uh, spiritual planes. People make the association that in order to be a really good rock star, you have had to endure a lot of psychological pain. You just know the whole process of, of, of uh, of a child looking up to a rock star and the rock star being that being something to him but that subconsciously he he uh, connects to a great deal that I just know it's a really healthy process I feel that the person that I am to somebody else who doesn't need who doesn't know me, the person that they think I am is an equally uh, valid person as the actual person sitting here right now. Like, I think that, that, that it's equally as real as me sitting here. Do you feel that the band is your family? Would you say that's yeah. the bond you have? Yeah, because uh, I kind of think of that as being the center of my life. It's far easier to think that behind the scenes you're doing something wild than the way you really live. Right. To see you doing yoga and to pray together and to be uh, so conscious of your nutrition and your environment. 
That's a phenomenal thing. It's so much more thrilling and exciting and wild to me to feel like there's this enormous field of growth in front of me. You're very devoted to your daughter, Clara. I've got to be there for her because I'm her father and I'm the only father she'll have and she's a kid and I've got to be there no matter what. And so that sort of unconditional giving no matter what, which I feel is you know one of the most basic, important spiritual principles mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of a way to live has totally influenced me as a musician. How do you see the younger generation? There's no space for kids to think and to be... No time, is that what you mean? Space not just time, but space in the air. There's all this information yeah. flying around, Excellent. and there's no room for kids to think to develop their, their, their own personalities. Hit me, you can't hurt me. Suck my kiss. Kiss me, please, for something. Stick with me, up. Is she talking to me? Give to me, we say, resist. Your mouth was made to suck my with how thought creates form right and how form influences your thoughts yeah so I watch the dynamic of spiritual alchemy in people so it excites you when you get yeah well you know when I do readings on people when I do a health evaluation uh -huh. on you what I'm looking for quite frankly is where you have invested your spirit into physical matter and how much it's costing you right. spiritually and the wise use of your spirit. I'm not a voyeur. You know, I don't go around and scan people. Right. To be honest with you, I'm not interested yeah. in, in doing that any more than you are singing in every corner of every room uh -huh. you walk into in your life. Where my help is most beneficial uh -huh. is at the stage in which you are actually developing the illness. Because I'm able to say, I'll tell you where you're losing power, and I'll tell you where, and I'll tell you why. And if you can shift this, this won't, the likelihood of this happening uh -huh. is reduced dramatically. Do you see yourself retiring soon? Or? No. Okay. <laughs> what about other ambitions? Being more at peace with myself so that I can be more at peace with all the people mm -hmm. that I come into contact with and and not destroy relationships with all of my fucked up character defects. I also want to be a dad. You know, I I just like the kids. It's like, baby time. I like to, you know, spend time with kids and have a place to, to give that unconditional love and and uh, and do the family thing, have the unit, you know, feel the, the joy of you know, we're we're a little team here, and you know, I know it's harder than it than it sounds. It takes a lot of work. There's a constant kind of communication, uh, not with human beings. You, just for clarity's sake, mm. are referring to a non-physical. Yeah. Like an angel. Yeah. I don't know. I, I know it involves a language that I that I don't consciously understand, that subconsciously somewhere in myself I do understand, and I know that I can translate ideas that they give me in their technical form, in their language, into musical, into a musical representation of what, of, of that idea, without being conscious of it. I know I'm doing that. There aren't many people in your occupation that would admit to feeling that they are, should we use the word, co-creating or co-scripting music with an angel.
your spiritual practice like? My not like my discipline? Yeah. Um, at the moment, I meditate twice a day. Mm -hmm. I, I pray every morning. I pray every night. I pray before and after every show that I play. Um, I pray before I eat, but only when I'm by myself. What would you define as the difference between prayer and meditation? I would say that prayer is talking to God mm -hmm. and that meditation is listening to God. People don't realize that there is a phenomenal spiritual difference between a promise and a vow. Right. A vow is something that is a promise that goes vertically and a human promise is a horizontal right. thing that can be negotiated. I don't think people know the nature of the sacred and how intimate that role is in someone's life. That you do truly have an angel. Often I'll hear people complain about their situation, about how unhappy they are. But they really, it's like for them to want to change, they have to completely surrender to the unknown. Mm -hmm. And say, okay, I'm gonna, whatever it's gonna be, I'm gonna change and mm -hmm. I'm gonna go into this risky place. People want to grow consciously, right. but they want selective consciousness. Yeah, they want it so it doesn't hurt. Yeah, and yeah. you know, they want to sort of, um, well, I don't want this to change and I don't want that to change. Right. And what I've realized is that people are frightened of God more than anything else because the belief is that as you pursue spirituality, it's going to cost. Right. And there is an exchange. Yeah. You know, that's absolutely true. And it's the change that goes with surrender and with finally yeah. realizing, I cannot make my physical world more important than the spiritual. parts to being human. You know, there's two people in every one of us. There's the ego, which you just described, yeah. which is the part of us that believes that who I am is what I have, what I do, what others think of me, how, how much better I am than other people, yeah, and, yeah. <laughs> and it's like living in all these low frequencies. And then there's the other part of us, the higher or the sacred self, that says, uh, I don't care whether I win or lose, whether I'm better than anybody else, how much I have, and all I want is to be at peace. But is there not a time for a low frequency? Just when you're sort of relaxing and you start using your intuition yeah. you start using creativity you mm. start using insight these are higher frequencies yeah. than fear and stress and anxiety and you just call that in you can call that in at will you can do that in your emotional health you can do that physical health you can do that in consciousness Einstein said nothing nothing happens until something moves the sound ah does appear in the word God and it appears in the name for for God in every language in the world. And it's the sound of creation. Prophet, you're one of the only rock musicians in the, in the world doing yoga. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> I mean, it seems pretty popular nowadays. I thought I could already do the splits and stuff. Uh -huh. So I was able to progress at it really quickly. You're not so, kidding. I mean, if, if you can put your legs behind your head. Yeah. Let me see that. That's, a, that's astonishing. <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> but you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of mind in that too. There's a lot of you know, like yoga. You know, the word yoga means union. Mm -hmm. what, what meditation does in yoga is very similar. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, it pushes you in touch with the oneness? You know, it's like you can't divide silence. Mm -hmm. You cut silence in half as many times as you can cut it in half. You, you, you can. It's indivisible. Proverb that said that it's the, it's the silence between the notes that makes the music. A note that occurs after 20 seconds of silence uh, is not the same note that would have occurred before the 20 seconds if you just heard the note at the at zero yeah. seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, the the note that occurs to 20 seconds or the note that occurs in 40 seconds. Those are new notes, you know, those are notes that are created out of the silence. Out of and the, the silence, And the yeah. silence is part of the note, and, yeah. and the silence, in that case, obviously if it's the note lasts for one second and the 20 seconds is the silence, then mm. the 20 that's seconds is, yeah. is, 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 is a bigger part of the note than the note itself. That's, that's and, exactly right, yeah. yeah.
secret to success in life is to, is to uh, fall in love with what you do. And then what you do is you sell the love. You know, and that's what you're doing up there. You're really not selling music. You're selling, you're we're, selling we're, your love. We're in love with the music yeah. And, yeah. And, and each other and, and, and what we create and, is and very special. And that really special. comes across. There was a real strong sense of love. I mean, there were people, you know, like putting their fingers up in the air and... and, and <laughs> Flashing the metal. <laughs> Flash the metal. <laughs> I've got eight children. Do you really? Six daughters and two sons. Yeah. You are Six a stud. beautiful daughters. Yeah, well, I got them. It's all my pleasure. My wife is a stud. <laughs> <laughs> it's your pleasure. Right. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs>
looks just like what you said. It looks like an animal with a mane. It's just like mm, yeah. mm, every in miles of these clear cuts. And this com- these companies take uh, seven foot chainsaws to take the old growth down. They clear cut it into the ground. Then they light it on fire with diesel fuel or with napalm, where it burns for days. Then they spray 40 gallons of diesel fuel per acre onto the land to carry herbicides. And all of this is, causes, is known to cause cancer and birth deformities. Being still and being open are two of the most profound things we can do in the world today. One of the most radical things we can do in the world today. Yeah. Because everything is pulling us in a million different directions. <laughs> I mean, look at it out there. It's like bigger, better, faster now, bigger, better, faster now. And it's just like, whoa. Oh, it's got old me. People's power is their ability to recognize that they change the world. Their power is what enables a person to stand up against injustice. That gives them the, the, the chance to say, you know, I don't agree with that. And I'm going to say it. And I'm going to say it loud. And you can make fun of me. You can throw me in jail. You can beat me up. You can, you can threaten me. But I'm not going to back down. Did you have rituals that you did? Actually, climbing the tree was a ritual, oh. and I didn't even realize it. So you went down, you climbed up and down? Not to the ground. The tree oh. is 200 feet tall, right. and I would climb 100 feet of that about four times a day. I've never been very ritualistic, right. but I started, while I was in the tree, I started, I do believe in prayer, right. and I don't, I believe you can pray to whatever you feel that prayer is going to, and it's just collective consciousness. Right. And uh, so I started having a prayer may every breath that enters my body be a prayer because that is then then my life becomes my ritual right. that way and that's been very powerful that's for awesome me. on our public lands we lost in the last year we lost 1.2 billion dollars to logging right. on our public lands so not only did they take our forest but they took our money right. to do it wow. so well, we're we're working on what's happening now is we're empowering the people and we're going to start doing people's initiatives. Right. Is there anything that, like, you know, all the people that come on to to watch this that they can do to, uh, you know, in terms of, like, boycotting or writing letters? Or Absolutely, they can. There's a lot of different things. Number one, they need to know that any, a lot of times if you go and you're buying a hot tub, a sauna, a deck, siding for your house or a fence, yeah. a lot of times it's from Redwood. Yeah. Go buy it. Begin speaking out. I believe very strongly in the power of words. And the third thing is in contacting local representatives, whoever they are, and letting them know that forest issues are important. I love being in Redwood so much. I spend a lot of time up in Big Sur up there. You know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of beautiful trees up there. I like to walk around. There. Yeah. It's an incredible feeling. I went to go climb a tree in the park near here, and they yeah. had it wrapped in these electrical wires for these lights. And I was yeah. just like, that was messing with my energy. I couldn't go climb a tree and climb around the cords, so yeah. I gave up. And Enough climbing sat trees. In the Me and my daughter spent a week climbing trees just last week. Nice. Yeah, but only little ones because she's the old. <laughs>